Hey YouTube, Rico Knows here. Um, it's early in the morning. I went to bed last night knowing that Robert Livingston had just been hired as the defensive coordinator for Colorado. And I made my video. I said my, I said my piece. It's on YouTube. And then I got a bunch of comments. I got one guy talking to me about how he's racist and I'm not. <laughs> it's not what he said, but essentially what he projected. Um, thinks I'm making money off the backs of black athletes. I don't know what the fuck the guy's talking about. But anyways, let's stay focused here. I woke up this morning and I've been sitting here and I've been reflecting on the hire. And I started to think about all these great players that signed at Colorado without a defensive coordinator. I want you to look at the transfer portal class and the amazing players that Coach Prime has convinced to come to Colorado or recruited. And I've been excited about this transfer portal class. I've assessed it at length. If you guys don't know who I am and what I do, I assess 133 FBS level teams. I'm not a Colorado homer. Uh, I'm not in the pocket like you guys would think of, of Colorado followers, fans, and coaches. Um, I'm just an honest guy. I make assessments and I keep it moving. And I've been doing this for a living uh, on TikTok, on YouTube, on Patreon. And I never want to be... Like, I never want to miss the mark. I always want to be accurate, and I never want to be biased. So it's at this moment, I have to call a spade a spade and just tell you how I assess the situation, and it's bothering me this morning because I didn't want to make this video. Um, but then, I shouldn't say that. It's bothering me this morning because I feel like I might be onto something, and I really want to talk to some of the players I really want to get more information, but right now, knee-jerk reaction, I don't like the hire of Robert Livingston. Been at the NFL for a long time, and at no point was he ever considered to be promoted above a secondary coach, and I think that's why he makes this move, right? You're a safeties coach, a secondary coach. For nine years, you were part of the Bengals. You were once a scout, things like this, but people, oh, man, he's been in the NFL a long time. He knows how to get there. He knows what it takes. Yeah, he does, but... Listen, when you've never been a defensive coordinator at the collegiate level, I think about all the other requirements of the job, things like recruiting, the day-to-day -day life of evaluating talent and recruiting and selecting certain and making certain decisions. And then I think about somebody like Robert Livingston who had to agree to take the job but didn't bring any staff with him. I see so many coordinators and head coaches show up to a position and bring position coaches with them. Yet here's Robert Livingston. He brings no position coaches with him. He's just grateful to have the job or the position. And I'd, I'd imagine he was one of the few candidates that agreed to, to those, I guess, parameters for taking the job. But that doesn't bother me. Shout out to Coach Prime. You have every right to hire who you want to hire for the job. You can give them your parameters and your criteria for how you're going to hire them. But I sit here and I wonder, did you use big names? Did you use false promises to get your transfer portal class? Like there's so many great transfers on the defensive side of the ball. And I wonder, did you manipulate these young men into thinking they were going to get Jim Leonard? And to thinking they were going to get Warren Sapp, Ken Norton Jr., whoever. Like, did you have these conversations with these guys? And be like, yo, don't worry about the defensive coordinator right now. We're about to get somebody, a big name from the NFL, because that's what was told to everyone. And this is not a big name from the NFL. When I look at this hire, yes, he's from the NFL, which I can tell you doesn't equate to success. I've seen so many coaches come from the NFL and struggle with the day-to-day -day rigors of college football, the, the requirements of the job. They just want to coach the job. And we all know that's not the way the college game is. You have to mentor mold these, these young men into being professionals, whereas in – in the NFL, you're inheriting professionals. You don't tell them how to work out. You don't tell them when to lift weights. They know how to do those things. And if they're not doing it, they, they fall by the wayside and they don't make it. So you can focus on the football side of the thing. But if you show up to Colorado and you're told stay in your pocket and only focus on the football side of things, then you're going to fail because we need so much more. And I looked at his track record at Vandy, right? 
Um, where was he before that? One more school before that. And I, I looked at it and I thought, man, he's just an assistant. He wasn't a defensive coordinator by any means. I don't know if he understands all of that. But what I will tell you is, is the football side, X's and O's, is irrelevant to me. What I'm more concerned with is, did we just hire, did Colorado just hire a bona fide personal trainer for Shiloh and Travis Hunter. Is that all we got? A guy who's going to show up and start their college, their, their NFL careers early? Is that all there is? Because that doesn't help you in the Big 12 trying to stop the rushing attack of DJ Giddens and K-State. Like, that doesn't stop you trying to stop Texas Tech and their rushing attack. Like, what are we doing? And then there's that last part. Was there manipulation? Was there talking to impressionable young men with false promises and getting them to sign on the dotted line knowing full well you weren't going to hire a quote-unquote big name from the NFL? Now, I don't need name recognition. I don't, I don't need a superstar. What I need to understand is these young men, now they're there. They're bought in. They're in the system. It's fine. But what's promised? Because this feels very calculated. The hiring, the timing of it, you could have hired Robert Livingston two weeks ago, three weeks ago, a month ago. He was available. So it's not your first option, second, maybe third. But it's kind of bothersome when the option or when the hiring happens after the portal closes, after you're done signing, you know, 20 something young men. It's just kind of something to think about. I, I'm just thinking out loud. I'm sure there's going to be backlash because there's a lot of fanatical uh, Colorado fans on YouTube. You guys are out of touch with reality and out of touch with assessing situations from both perspectives. A lot of guys just write to me and go, no, it's Coach Prime. I trust him. You know, something like that. And I'm like, yeah, I know. God send him to Colorado. Um, but I, I call situations for what they are. And I just, I'm sitting here and I'm analyzing. I'm just wondering. I'm wondering out loud. What is this? It is what it is. Your friends don't know, but Rico knows. Stay up, y'all. Peace.